box. That's still slavery. Yeah. And so you send them back to a hole somewhere and say, well, we gave you a chance to get out and you didn't get a job, you didn't pay your money, so we'll lock you back up. But how do you get back, which I think you got to get to the root of the problem. Yes. And what's the root? It's, it's, it's behavior, it's personal responsibility. And but what do you want personal responsibility? Yeah, I think a root, the, the root of a lot of it is up the top, those who make the rules. And the rules need to be changed, and those who are in there making the rules need to be changed. Those guys' lives are set. Those guys don't lack for anything. So they can make those rules like that. But if they had to come to the bottom and live the way the same people who they put rules on, then they, they would see a whole lot different than what the, the way they do things today in our society. But you get back to the root of the problem, like I mentioned. It's, it's decisions. How do you teach somebody to make wise decisions? Wisdom. You know, there ain't that much wisdom. And we've, we've basically taken what I'd say the root of the, the, the wisdom would be, I mean, would be the Bible. That would be your that would be your your basis for wisdom. I would see, you know, seeking God as being all wisdom is what Scripture says. There's your basis. Well, that basis is not there much. Mm -hmm. The basis is not in the, it ain't in the school system. You know, the greatest piece of literature ever written, the the greatest bestseller, is, is not in the schools. I mean, where are people learning the Ten Commandments? Mm -hmm. Where are people learning the rules? They ain't learning in the family. Because the, the, in a lot of cases, if, I mean, look at the how many broken homes there are. There's not, that's what I admire about Leo that's here with us. He's raised with four or five kids, and, and he's still married 20-something years. Got a good, solid work ethic. That's what I admire about him, you know. And, and we got to get that. We got to instill those values back in the American family. Let's uh, continue that conversation after we break here for the news. And uh, part of the news is uh, weather alert this, this afternoon here in Smyrna. And right now the sun's shining here in Smyrna, but I know some of you, uh, the thunder is rolling outside and uh, damaging winds, large hail, and uh, destructive lightning out there going on in uh, parts of the county, especially uh, Murfreesboro and the Walter Hill area and northeast parts of the county. So we're going to get in on the action here in the not too distant future. Kind of can't see any clouds in here. Oh, from looks, this. looks nice out there. Look, uh, from the one window that we can see out of, it looks sunny. But yeah. uh, back toward the, the town, uh, Murfreesboro area, does look a bit ominous. We've got uh, Carl Marable with Second Chance Ministries here talking to us today. And Leo Woodard and uh, Kitoria Edmonds is here as well, uh, a Laverne graduate and uh, Lipscomb student. We're going to talk to her here in just a second. And uh, what really brought on this conversation was Dr. King's speech from 1968 that um, I have a dream speech. And, and here we are, years later, we... Where have we gone? Have we made some strides? And I, I, well, I, I think, like what Casey said a minute ago, we have. But where have we gone? Have, have, yeah. have you know, have we been driving 20 miles an hour, or have we been driving the speed limit? And and I, I kind of agree with him. Maybe we've been driving a little slow. Well, I, I think you know, I've never been told to, to drink from a different water fountain. I've never been told to use a different restroom. Right. I've never been told to ride the back of the bus. I've never been told those things. I couldn't fathom. You know, we can't even fathom that. But um, one thing that I'm proud of, and this is how I think we've came so far, is look at Mr. Willie Brandon, 103-year-old uh, custodian at the courthouse, who was a grandson of a slave. All right, um, and this is a comment I made at the commission of the day. You know, I was a, a really thrilled that the mayor, Mayor Ernest Burgess, let him lie and state there. You know, with the, with the casket visitation at the courthouse. I asked around. As far as I know, that's the only man that's ever they've ever done that for. A custodian. I mean, the son of a grandson of a slave, okay? And think about the irony that I mentioned. Nathan Bedford Forrest stormed those courthouse doors and freed Confederate soldiers. The same courthouse Nathan Bedford Forrest stormed, which, which you got to admire Nathan Bedford Forrest. I mean, you got to admire his chivalry and, and assertiveness as a general, no doubt. But you look at that and then you see the irony of this man who was a custodian. That, that, that this, not just the mayor held him up in high esteem, everybody, the whole community held him up in high esteem. Sheriff Truman Jones was there with their, with their color guard, and it was just an it was awesome event. You've seen the pictures of things that he'd done. Um, just a great man. It goes back to his work ethic. It goes back to that generation, what I call the greatest generation, his work ethic. The man was honest. He was compassionate. Um, he'd done what he said he was going to do. 
And his, his, to me, his greatest mentor was Christ. If anybody that knew, Mr. Really knew, that's what he'd be talking to you about. Was, was Christ himself, you know. But I think we've came a long way. Look at Haiti right now. Look at the outpouring of support going to that country, you know. Um, I think we've came a long way. I'm sure there's, there's work that needs to be done. Uh, but I think, I think the work that needs to be done needs to be done in the families, black and white. And it gets back to morality. And where do you find that morality? You take religion out of that equation, it's a, it's a zero. I mean, it's got to, you got to get the morality back in there to ever heal the family and heal and heal people. Uh, before Carl makes a comment, uh, we've got another weather warning. The uh, severe thunderstorm watch for North Rutherford County has been canceled, but now a new one takes its place in Southern Rutherford County. So that's south of Murfreesboro. We're talking the Barfield area um, and uh, Christiana area south of Murfreesboro. Uh, severe thunderstorm warning until 4:15. That's until 4:15 this afternoon afternoon damaging winds in excess of 60 miles an hour with this storm and um, I believe yeah it um, storms like this with the straight line winds can cause some uh, pretty serious damage uh, just like tornadoes can so keep that in mind south Rutherford County until 415 this afternoon Carl what were you going to say there well you know uh, the family first and one of the things that that took away in my heart that uh, when I go through lowland neighborhoods, uh, no matter what color they are, kids in the streets and uh, no work actors, no training, uh, nothing for them to do, and schools is out, and uh, of course, uh, violence and crime goes up because of lack of, and and we who have authority, we sit and we police them, but as far as we go, we don't give them anything else to do but size police them. I think the change needs to be made uh, differently. How do we teach the young kids how to work with their hands and educate their minds uh, throughout the summer as well. We've done eight events last uh, year uh, in the communities trying to bring kids and families together. But it's going to take more than just uh, a little ministry like Second Chances. It's going to take a whole body. And I got a young lady here that I'm very proud of who went to Laverne High School who, who studied and made great grades and had a hard time trying to get into school. Uh, she comes from a single uh, family, but uh, I admire her so deeply. Uh, she's here to study law and stuff. So uh, that's what touches me to see a change in people who who desire to, but sometimes they get pushed back. But she kept pressing on uh, to fulfill her dream, like Martin Luther King says. And, um, and that's uh, Kitoria. Yeah. Uh, she is here, Kitoria Edmonds, and uh, Laverne grad and Lipscomb student. He, uh, Carl was talking about how you had trouble getting in. What I was did. that all about? Um, I, I had plenty of scholarships, grants, um, everything like that, and they were still telling me that in order for me to live on campus and everything that I would need to do to actually be able to go to class and everything like that, I would have to take out four more thousand dollars in loans. And you know, for me, that's not a big option. I wouldn't have a co-signer, you know, things that you need to get loans, I wouldn't have been able to get that much in. So I ended up having to wait a semester, and I'm in school now, thank God. Um, and I'm actually commuting back and forth you know that worked itself out for me and I'm happy you know but it, it was hard even making with a 3.7 GPA I had that really? issue right Wow. right right so and why why was that an issue you know I'm not sure I'm thinking because of it wasn't enough financial aid you know where's our financial aid for the schools you know for the college students and you know my school, Laverne has gotten better with, you know, telling us about the scholarships and things like that. But, you know, it, when I was in school, which is just a year ago, you know, it, they didn't put that out there as much as they are pushing for it now. So I think my lack of knowledge for the scholarships kind of, kind of, um, what am I trying to Well, that's to why you have right. guidance counselors. Right. I mean, I mean right. those folks are the right. ones that are there to help, uh, right. help you find the, the financial financial aid right. but you aspire to do great things right, don't you right I expect I want to be a lawyer and you know I want to be in the community helping the people I it's, it's a passion of mine even when I was in school I was on the National Honor Society and you know we had to do 
a lot of that community service, but you know, I went above what I needed to do, what I had to do, what was required. And um, a lot of, one of my community service projects that I remember now, and that's my favorite, I went to um, Louisiana.